Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I've been a family systems therapist for over 30 years, and part of my work has been to study and learn about and to teach people about effective communication. We all depend on communication to get our needs met with each other, and yet paradoxically very few people study how to communicate effectively. This video is one of a series of tips on how to improve the effectiveness of your communication. Communication aims at filling needs. Would you like to get more needs met with more people more of the time in a way that feels good? Yes? Here's a tip. One of seven specific powerful skills that you and anyone else can learn if they wish is the skill of awareness. What's going on right now? Uh, in our context here, what I'm talking about is awareness of how you communicate. In my experience doing therapy with hundreds and hundreds of average couples who are having problems, one of the things I've noticed over and over again is most couples are unaware, they're not aware of how they are communicating. They can talk about what, the, what they're communicating about, but not how they communicate. This video focuses on one thing that you can learn to be aware of that will help you improve the effectiveness of your communication with kids and adults. It focuses on some words you use, words called pronouns. A pronoun, as you may remember from school, is a word that stands for a noun. Um, he, she, it, them, they, those. Those are some of the common pronouns that we use so frequently we don't even think about it. What I'm inviting you to do in this video is in important relationships and in important conversations, not just pass the salt, but should you and I uh, declare bankruptcy? Should we get divorced? Should we adopt a child? In important communication, especially if you're conflicted, pay attention to the words you use. In particular, pay attention to the pronouns. Here are some examples. A fuzzy statement which people use without even thinking about it. Well, we need to fix this problem. Who is we and what is this problem? It can mean one thing to you, and it can mean another thing to your partner. If you don't clarify what this problem is, you're at risk of misunderstanding. Uh, here's a similar one. Have you ever heard somebody say, well, a real issue here is, or somebody has to solve this issue. There are two vaguenesses in that sentence. Somebody, who is this mysterious somebody? Our parents, your brother, your son, your boss, your co-worker, the minister. Who? Not somebody. Who? And what is, quote, this issue that is really, really vague? Um, if you, instead of saying this issue, saying you and I need to cooperate on balancing the checkbook every week, that is specific. It's a lot different than, well, somebody has to fix this problem. You see what I'm driving at? Get specific when you're talking about matters that you regard to be important. Commonly, we all use, partly because we're lazy, or partly because we don't even think about it, we use the pronoun they, pronouns, they or them or those people. When you do that, if you find you're having trouble communicating and feeling heard or getting your point across, substitute people's names or titles. My sisters, my co-workers, my neighbors, my churchmates, the other people in my political party, the Kiwanis Club members, the Boy Scouts, Name who you are talking about. 
takes a little extra effort, but it avoids misunderstandings and generalizing. Here are some other favorites. When's the last time you heard somebody say, oh, well, uh, pretty soon, or sometime, I'll get that done sometime, uh, or, yeah, well, I'll get to that later. Exactly what do those terms mean? You may not need to know exactly, or it may be really important. When are you going to put gas in the car? Oh, I'll get to that later. Does that fill your need? Or do you need to hear, I'll get to it before 4 o'clock this afternoon? That is more precise and will avoid arguments, anxiety, and misunderstanding. You see what I'm driving at here. It takes a little extra work. Um, how about this one? Well, things are going to get a lot worse. What things? The state of the economy, what is that? Get specific. I am going to feel more anxious. I'm going to need more money. Uh, I'm scared that the price of medical care is going up. That's specific. That really makes your point. Things are going to get better or worse is really, really vague. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. Here's another example, an example of a triple fuzzy set of words. How about, you know, that really upset them. Uh, that may be perfectly understandable to the other person, or they may be confused. Notice the difference if you say, the tax audit really upset Jose and Maria. Uh, that is much clearer, isn't it? Uh, here's one last example. You know, that's a real mess. What is a mess? What Exactly what is that? What is that and what is a mess? How about that sound from the car engine is really worrisome. And the last time we took it to a mechanic, they didn't fix it. That is specific thinking and speaking. So here's the point. If you have trouble communicating with someone or in a certain situation, one thing to use the powerful skill of awareness is to see if by chance you or the other person are using vague descriptive pronouns or other phrases. The real key here is become aware of how you're thinking and how you're speaking if you're having trouble in social relationships or accomplishing things that, uh, that you want to be productive at. Awareness is the key. Uh, if you discover someone using vague terms with you, an option is to ask them what they mean. That's a real mess. You might say, what do you mean by that? And what do you mean by mess? You have the right to ask for clarification. Okay? Others have that same right to ask you. What I hope you're coming away from in this video, besides thinking about do you ever use vague terms that contribute to misunderstandings or hinder the effectiveness of your communication, the real question is how aware are you of your communication process? Your thinking, which is internal communication, and talking, which is external communication. Here are two links that can help you learn more about, become more aware of your awareness. The first is a video, <clears throat> if you're in case you're a video, visual learner. Here's a link to uh, a video about awareness. And here is the link to an article in my nonprofit ad-free ad website about improving your awareness. I hope that you find this video thought-provoking. I'd be glad to hear any kind of feedback at all uh, from you on the video, on other videos, on my website, um, or any personal recovery stories that you choose to tell. Thanks for watching.